I think we are seeing a trend. And I think, like you said, that is, is definitely a trend that is, is visible, that is happening. Um, and that should be concerning to Bitcoiners, because if you cannot use the money in ways the state doesn't, that the state doesn't want you to use it, that money that you're saving is probably pointless because either you won't be allowed to save it, like you said, or you'll be allowed to save it and then you'll be able to spend it at government approved merchants, government approved institutions, et cetera. And it won't actually have the, the freedom value that you think it will have. This week on Monero Talk is sponsored by Monero.com Wallet. Store, send, receive, and exchange your Monero safely on iOS and Android too. Monero.com Wallet is open source and you always control your own keys. And by IVPN. Resist online surveillance with IVPN, a privacy-focused audited and transparent VPN provider that accepts Monero directly. Monero.com Wallet and IVPN are trusted and verified by the Monero community. Monero Talk is also made possible from contributions by viewers and listeners like you. And supporting us is easier than ever by typing in our YAT free speech money into your Monero.com or Cake Wallet send address field to send us a tip. This week on Monero Talk, we listen to the final part of the three-part interview, A Thorough Critique of Monero, with Douglas Giacomo and Seth. Monero Talk starts now. But what's wrong with the nat natural transition of people that are just moving in that direction? Like, so, I mean, that's, that, that's how Bitcoin started, right? They, it started on the dark markets. That's where it really had its first use case. Uh, and people were using it. They didn't even know it would essentially have value in the future, but it served a use, whatever. They use it to buy drugs, whatever it is. A lot of, you know, a lot of those people, you know, they held on to some of it, not realizing, but its 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 store of value grew out of its initial use as digital cash so what's wrong with you know monero going through that same you know uh, essentially growth growth phase well, because i'm convinced that people that will do make this choice will uh, will lose a lot of money because i think that monero will eventually uh follow other altcoins to be kind but uh, i don't mean shit coins okay, I don't if, there's I mean, I mean, if there's an actual demand for it as digital cash and people want to use it for that purpose and so yeah instead of you know uh, adding friction to your life and moving into monero when you need it and then back into bitcoin just the they'll just naturally, you know, keep some Monero. And then won't that create kind of a base, well, but this base, is, base but this level is, of utility and, and value from that utility? Sure, but that sets approach, which is just like the, the amount you think you may spend in uh, DNMs or, or elsewhere in the next month, you keep it on, on this checking account. And that I think that makes sense, which is a very overlooked uh, option. Well, the amount just keep most of your wealthy Monero for the next years, I think that will get people. Fired. But this is a completely non-privacy related or just tangentially privacy related. I think that there are strong monetary reasons why Monero will not uh, survive long term as a strong unit of a strong store of value. Uh, because I think that's the, that's the old narrative about harder money eating up uh, softer money and... Uh, and basically the, uh, the, 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 the colored beans being eaten by metals and stuff like that. And I think this stuff is, uh, somebody could argue that it's not happening now. So somebody is just, could just uh, relegate this as something theoretical academic uh, about monetary theory, which in practice is not happening, but this stuff can happen very fast. And uh, my mental model since many years, which I'm still, I don't see reason to abandon still, is the mental model of the protocol wars of the internet something which is discussed is spreading but is still not exploded and so it has many alternatives because uh, network effects are not that important when you are just speculating but when you do have to maximize network effects then uh the the, the, the amount the, the asymmetry between tcp ip and everything else explodes and then from 94 to 90 from from 80 one to 94 you have probably 100 internet protocols uh competitors and then in one year you have basic destruction on, on the of them all and i think this will eventually happen with uh, with most altcoins and i think it will happen with monero as well of course the counterpoint will be uh, privacy is a strong uh, 
use case. Bitcoin is poor on that, so that will save Monero from that. But I think that if, if that's the point, eventually somebody will just create a, a, a Bitcoin Monero sidechain of some kind, recycling all the good choice that we discussed, except you cannot really recycle the the tail, the tail emission and, and the block uh, block the dynamic block ones, which are monetary choice. So you, you, you cannot bring them, but you can basically bring everything else, uh, especially the, the, the main things which are uh, ring signatures and, and, and CTs and, and stealth addresses. You can basically, I think Bitcoin will have stealth addresses. There is no reason why Bitcoin doesn't have stealth addresses. But even if you bring uh, ring signatures or CTs onto uh, liquid, which is a custodial nightmare, but any anything. I, I, my point is that I I will never suggest somebody to keep a relevant amount of money in Monero for the next five years. Uh, that's that's my point. I would, I will I just not, make, go ahead, sorry. Go ahead. I will not have any issue with set proposal to think about what you want to use in a very private way for the next month and and do that in a very uh, modular way. I would just say, I mean, you're speaking in absolute terms. We should, we also need to to you know uh, look at the the possibility that Monero is perhaps harder money than Bitcoin. That is possible, right? There's arguments that can be made there. You're completely completely discounting that. Yeah. Uh, and and the possibility that you, you know this theory of hard money uh, is an absolute. Uh, it's theoretical, and in reality, uh, will will end up in a world where there's you know competing protocols maybe a few strong ones and it's not necessarily the hardest that that you know uh wipes out everything else so i mean those those two things are possible but you're completely discounting those things as having any potential as, of occurring yeah so i i'm discounting the first as impossible uh logically impossible i think that the point that the, one of the one of the first reaction i had with bitcoin back in 2012 was it doesn't this doesn't make any sense because everybody can just recreate it and if the market cannot distinguish the original from the copies inflation in bitcoin is instantaneously infinite or indefinite immediately because everybody can create a bitcoin copy there is no scarcity here there is no uh, the the supply is of cryptocurrency is absolutely elastic with the demand of cryptocurrency there is total elasticity the more cryptocurrency you want, the more cryptocurrency somebody will create with very low barrier to entry. So uh, the, the answer to that, to this that convinced me about the viability of Bitcoin around 2013 was that actually the market does assign enormous value to shelling points and uh, and uh, discovering America once is not the same as discovering it twice and, uh, and, and a copy of... Uh, uh, and a perfect to copy, copy of the Mona Lisa is not the Mona Lisa. So the time priority is a strong market shelling point that, that, that can uh, serve the market in order to distinguish one copy, one special copy from all the non-special copy. From the second to the 100th, I think there is not a strong shelling point. And so, uh, so assume two, ext two extreme cases. One extreme case is the market will just spread the same value across any cryptocurrency. Then the price of every cryptocurrency is going to zero inevitably, and everybody's going to lose money because they're just diluting uh, too much. The, the other extreme, and also the economy cannot work because it's barter. Everybody has a different form of money. You have, a, you have basically a quadratic problem of, of setting prices and all. The other extreme is the market is con converging over just one. And this can actually work. Something in between, uh, you, you need something extremely arbitrary. Like when I talk with with uh, with um, with Namecoin friends, they will say, "Okay, we well, we just have scarcity in Bitcoin and Namecoin." When I talk with you guys, you may imagine a world where, where you're just Bitcoin and Monero, but there is no strong shelling point for the second best. We, it does seem a very Michael Saylor sentence, but I think that's game theoretically accurate. I don't think that the, the other thing that you could have to save the day is power laws. So you have like the market giving a super strong preference to one, then the second is just a little bit more, and you have basically power law distribution, which is very sharp. But I don't think there are strong, I don't think Monero can offer uh, a, uh, a, so let, let me put it this way. 
in order to reach the network effect of Bitcoin, Monero would have to make too many compromises because right now Monero is growing, but it's not growing as Bitcoin. And then we will move to talk about, I hope, uh, in the next minutes about dark net markets. Uh, Bitcoin is growing faster. The only thing you can do to hack the growth is to centralize more or to make uh, crazy trade-off choices in order to appear 10, 10 times better than Bitcoin. And since I don't think you really, uh, Bitcoin is not perfect, but Bitcoin trade-off choices are not that bad that you can easily find another, another tweak of the trade-off choices in order to be 10 times better. So I think that eventually uh, the, the market will go there. And the, the, if the market needs privacy, and I, th and I hope and think it does, it will just force some privacy improvement into Bitcoin. Not perfect, but good enough to keep people out of jail in the, the most possible numbers. But I don't think, I mean, I would be super surprised in, in the next five years we still have uh, the, the a cycle like the last one with uh, with shit coins. Maybe I'm wrong. Uh, if I'm wrong, then people who stored a, a large amount of money in Monero will be fine, and I will be wrong. But I I would not risk it, frankly. Seth, go ahead. I have more to say, but Seth, go ahead. I don't really have anything crazy on this. I mean, monetary history and theory is not my my focus. Number go up is not my focus. Store value is not really my focus. So I'm very much on the the technical and the method of exchange aspect. I mean, the main thing for me is I do see that there is strong and increasing need for transactional privacy in cryptocurrencies, and Monero is what is filling that gap. That's there's nothing else even close to it. Um, I'm saying outside of Bitcoin, obviously. There are lots of people transacting in Bitcoin, but not even as many people transacting privately within Bitcoin as are transacting in Monero. Um, so I, I do think that there's something to be said of that for store of value. I'm not going to speculate or, or dig into theory as to what that could mean long term, but I think there's a lot to be said about a, a valuable tool showing itself over the long term and gaining rapidly increasing adoption and usage and market share of that specific thing. Um, and I think that privacy does have an immense value from the method of exchange aspect, from the circular economy, parallel economy aspect, because it does reduce the, the burden that's imposed on people when there is a lack of fungibility. So there are, I think, a lot of reasons why it could and maybe even would take over the actual the, the spending and cryptocurrency use case. But what that means for store value, I'm not really going to speculate on that. I just think that there there is something there combined with very low inflation that could mean that there's a, a strong lower bound of demand for it. Um, but I'm I'm not pushing people to store their wealth in Monero. That's not not my thing or Bitcoin for that matter. But what could could you see some scenario where Monero? Um you know, is, is harder money than Bitcoin. It would, you're, you're saying the argument would have to be that it would have to be doing something that's 10x better than, than Bitcoin, right? Oh, w worse than that. It will, it will have to be something which is 10x better to Bitcoin to overcome. And when it does, you lost the shelling point and now nothing guarantees you that something will not be 10x better than Monero very soon. So you, you're losing the shelling point. That's when you have, you, 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 you see what you mean. So I, I see what you mean, but it's it's like it's the ultimate maxi argument. Um, it is. But it, it it ignores, and this is why I always talk about fungibility because it just ignores the fact that Bitcoin is lacking that, and then so then that really then. Because I, I assume when you say the hardest money, you're talking about all these essential elements of what what a hard money must be. Um, and then, so if there's one protocol that has fungibility and one protocol that lacks fungibility, uh, how are you then saying that that one that has fungibility isn't potentially more hard than the than the other one? Well, it's simple because uh, if you increase the demand of Bitcoin, you cannot increase the supply. I mean, under certain assumption. While if you increase the demand of Monero or something like Monero from the point of view of technology or dark market adoption, I think that uh, you can easily uh, increase the supply of those. Just copy Monero. And I don't think that... The, uh, so growing uh, both for timing and, uh, and immaculate conception problems, Bitcoin cannot be easily replicated uh, or cannot be replicated at all, realistically. While I think Monero, even with the current very... Uh, 
good, but then we will see how good is, is exactly uh, growth in darknet uh, markets. It can still, I can see the next uh, uh, non fucked up Zcash with a lot of VC marketing coming out with less obvious flows and taking over Monero uh, very fast. It's, it's something that it's, it's growing fast and can be overgrown even faster. It's not sticky. It's not, uh, uh, the, the supply of Bitcoin is fixed. The supply of Monero or something like Monero is not there. You can have infinite of those. And I don't think there is a strong difference between Monero and something like Monero, while there is a strong difference between Bitcoin and something like Bitcoin, including Monero. I, I, I hope it, this is al always a very difficult point to convey. There is a lot of confusion, but it's, it feels so clear in my mind that I, I always get angry that I cannot convey it very, very effectively. Well, it's for me that the, the, the struggle with accepting that point is ignoring what Bitcoin lacks to be hard money. But I'm not ignoring it. I mean, I, I, I what you're saying if, if a hard money was born, if the ultimate hard money was born at some point, then it would make sense for it to be different than everything else. And you can never copy that. But you've assumed that Bitcoin is the ultimate hard money and that it's already been born, that it's already happened, that we've already arrived at the hardest possible money when we know very like we know that it lacks a critical element of hard money. Like you yourself kind of kind of you know have have agreed that you know Bitcoin may not be you know fungible, right? I mean, in talking we've and I, I really didn't agree. I think that I, I don't I, I probably that's that's something. So if I did agree fully with that, I could make the case that the market will think Bitcoin is the first reusable divisible proof of work. Uh, adjusted proof of work, which is what Bitcoin is. And Monero is the first reusable, divisible, adjusted proof of work, which is also fungible. And then the market could find a strong shelling point on Monero. But I don't, I don't think that th th these differences is, is so relevant that the market could find a shelling point because ultimately, uh, ultimately, if Bitcoin breaks fungibility and you have a clean Bitcoin and dirty Bitcoin, then the clean Bitcoin will be uh, possible to use only in fiat use cases. So it will become eventually at equilibrium irrelevant because you will be allowed to do only the things you can do with fiat and the dirty Bitcoin will become the only Bitcoin. So right now, for example, Seth says that you have a burden to accept Bitcoin because of the lack of fungibility. But this burden is only a very particular, fragile uh, attempt to have this regulated Bitcoin bullshit. For me, I don't have any burden accepting Bitcoin because I know that I will never try to sell it for a house in a regulated exchange. I never did it. I will never will. So for me, there is no reason to check the tainted history of any Bitcoin I'm receiving. If anything, if somebody has tainted Bitcoin and wants to give me with a discount, I'm taking the discount because I know I will never use Bitcoin to try to get authorized to buy something because if I wanted that, I would use fiat. So I think that right now there is a lot of people that are trying to save Bitcoin in order to 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 go through a KYC exchange. But I think that the the the, the incredible likely ally of Bitcoin in that case will be the governments of the world that will eventually screw that use case completely up, uh, leaving the dirty Bitcoin as the only Bitcoin. So I don't think uh, I think that privacy in Bitcoin is critically lacking. And in order for Bitcoin to work as K, we have to fix it. Well, fungibility, it's something that when you break it, you just, Bitcoin just becomes black market Bitcoin and the rest is some basically shitty Bitcoin based ATF, which you can only use for regulated purposes. So it becomes irrelevant anyway. And you don't see it as adding friction to, to the network. The fact that, you know, it has this attack surface on top of it because it's transparent and something like Monero may effectively be more efficient as a transactional currency allowing, you know, uh, no, I think Monero can be safer because it's more private. So it can be safer to protect you from people coming to punish you because you bought something. So, so privacy Monero is safer for users if they use it correctly. While fungibility as an economical concept, I, I really, I, we're getting back to the all or nothing problem. I think mm -hmm. there is no 
advantage in being all or nothing. Uh, people will not be able to buy houses with uh, coin joining bitcoins, and they will not be able to buy houses with Monero eventually. And I think that would be completely indistinguishable. So not a, not a point which is not a difference which will create scarcity in itself. There will be the first uh, difficulty adjusted proof of work, and then there will be one of many others which enforces something at the protocol level to a certain point. But I don't think I don't feel this is strong and re even remotely strong. I don't even know that if there will be something strong enough to recreate the shelling point. I think that if Bitcoin was to suffer a flippening, not just a market cap flippening, but a serious use case network effect flippening. Uh, I think, it, in my opinion, there will be centuries before the market can find another convention for scarcity. I don't know if, if you understand what I mean. I get what you're saying. I, I don't agree with it. And, and Seth, you can jump in. I just, I guess, um, I don't know. I, I had I had one other point, and now now it's escaping me. Seth, go ahead and jump in. I mean, I feel like we're we're you know we're, we're belaboring this point. It's you know it's kind of the ultimate uh, Monero Bitcoin. Yeah, and it but I, I, that's why I wanted to push it at the, because I know that this yeah, this yeah, is yeah, more yeah, fundamental. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, even uh, if I was agreeing with you one hundred percent on Monero and everything, I will still call it a shitcoin just for this, which is in a way unfair because because until this point is fixed. There's nothing that can really convince me on anything. So I agree. How, how about as a hedge? How about as a hedge to Bitcoin? So you see a use for Monero if you really need privacy. I think you, you've said that and you, you stand by that. But ultimately, it's going to trend to zero against Bitcoin. Uh, how about as a hedge for all the things we talked about? The security differences, the difference in the way you know Monero is mined, it's proof of work. Uh, the difference in uh, the fact that it's it's arguably uh, more fungible on the protocol level, whether you agree with that, just just it's it's design differences. Do you think that you know gives it a use as a hedge to Bitcoin? No, because unfortunately there are other possible uh, subtitle choices of trade-offs in other cryptocurrencies, and if you want to edge against Bitcoin, you eventually have to split. And, and and dilute this edge across several many other choices including maybe proof of work uh, and proof of stake or including uh, quantum resistance which as a physicist I think it's mostly bullshit in the case of ACDSA but I don't know and and Monero and Bitcoin are both not quantum resistant if if uh, the D wave is coming uh, up tomorrow with short algorithm so that there are so many possible hedges if I'm wrong that I would have to basically spread my money into infinite copies of, of Bitcoin with, with, with different particulars. So I do edge against Bitcoin, but I do it with physical gold and, um, and a little bit of Swiss real estate, but <laughs> not, with, not with altcoins at all. <laughs> okay. Oh, you call them altcoins. You didn't call it a shitcoin. We made, we made some progress. Yes, sir. <laughs> no, but I mean, no, I do. Shit, I think shitcoin is, uh, I, I insist with shitcoin because it's not, uh, I, I use the term scam coin, which is actually more aggressive because you are assuming bad faith in the creator, which, I mean, Monero is interesting because Monero started as a literal scam with, with the first crypto node, but then it was saved in a way from, from, from scamminess. While uh, I think that something like Ethereum has been consistently marketed with, uh, with uh, lies, technical lies, all of his history, while something again like uh, Saya coin or, or name coin or Monero has been marketed with for most of their history with serious technical points. So I call them shit coins because what I want to convey is that they are infinitely printable uh, and I don't think they will be. So I think that if tomorrow we have Monero 2 with some slight better trade of choice, there will not be a strong difference between Monero 2 and Monero as not remotely as strong as between Bitcoin and Monero 1. So that, that's my point for shitcoins. The network effect only applies to Bitcoin. Um, yeah. So I guess that gets to the to the dark markets comment that you want. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So I the, the, the second sentence that really triggers me is uh, this meme that, uh, uh, that now, literally, I have hundreds of comments, no dark market accept Bitcoin anymore. They're only going Monero only, which I mean, if it was the case, I would be super interested in uh, in checking out because for me, 
so some some bitcoiners ask, accept this stuff because they don't know what dark markets are and they accept this meme and they say ah oh, we don't need dark markets we are superior we just have a micro seller i would be just completely devastated if that was true even remotely true uh, that will seem what that will mean that I, I will not be bullish on, on Monero for the same reason I just explained, but I will be so bearish on Bitcoin. So I will probably think that they are both going to die uh, if, if that was the case. Uh, because um, uh, be I explained why I don't believe in multi coin future or in flippings, but uh, Bitcoin, if it was unusable on dark market, it would be a tragedy. So uh, what really pisses me off is that most of the people that promote this meme, both among Bitcoiners that react like we don't need dark markets, which is stupid. You, it's the only use case that really matters. It's uh, even because you can you can contrast. I was having a, a discussion with Saifedian about privacy a few days ago. It will come out the podcast. Uh, he's saying saving is more important than dark market purchasing of weed. Uh, what? Wait, wait. Saving may be most important than weed, but saving will be a dark market activity as well. If you can't buy weed, you will not be allowed to save as well. That's why dark markets are important as a litmus test. If Bitcoin cannot be used to buy weed, it cannot be used to saving under under adversarial circumstances. I agree. So, so, so dark, mar mar dark markets are important. I happen to, I, I have, I do work on reporting dark market activity since a few years. I cannot speak a lot of specific things, but I do have some uh, like very, very high level um, view of that. And uh, I don't know if, if you guys agree. Uh, I, I just I just give you a few names. If you have any other names, feel, feel free to correct me. Integrator say that my choice is a cherry picking, but I, I open my um, my Tor browser favorites now. So. Not, not for importance, but just because I hate it. In the first point, there is the new Alpha Bay. Of course, it's Monero only. I agree. Alpha Bay was a glorious market. It was closed. There was a tragic, tragic story. Very, very bad behavior by 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 state law enforcement. It came back, and it's Monero only. It's not as big as it was before. Also, because it's restricted with certain function. That there are a lot of restriction in new Alpha Bay if you tried it, and. Uh, for for research reason of course uh, even this uh, let me open a parenthesis i discuss with this with people and i say let me send you the the screenshot of uh, of the actual markets and they say oh nice try fbi like just 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 visiting dark markets was illegal as far as i know there is no jurisdiction in the world that will j just make it illegal to just visit the web page screenshot it maybe in emirates you cannot use store in theory but there's almost no jurisdiction well, for North Korea or something like that. Anyway, so I have Alpha Bay, Monero only. Then the second I have is Heineken. We sure accept Monero, but accept Bitcoin. Bitcoin is the first option when you check out. And, and if you try to check out, it's the most used. And it's accept Litecoin, which I mean, not very private. Yes, Mimble Wimble maybe. Then I have Dark Fox, which is pretty big, Bitcoin only. Then I have Azap, which is Bitcoin and Monero. Then I have Vice City, which is Bitcoin only. Then Tor to Door, which is Bitcoin and Monero. Then I have Kingdom, which is Bitcoin and Monero and Litecoin and Zcash. So probably Litecoin, I don't even know why, maybe for the fees. Then there is the, uh, I, I still have Alphabet, but now it's Abacus, which is Bitcoin and Monero. Then I have Gamma Goblin, which is Bitcoin. Psycelium is Bitcoin only. Fluxvam 4, uh, for the fourth edition, is still Bitcoin only. Black Pyramid is Bitcoin, Monero, Bcash, and Dash. Tor Market is Bitcoin, Monero, Litecoin, and, and Zcash. Bohemia, Bitcoin, and Monero, and Revolution. So, so the Bit Bitcoin is dying in the black market, the darknet markets, and Monero only. That's just one. It was White House before it closed. It was Monero only, but you could still do Bitcoin in the checkout page. And now it's Alphabet too. So it's one market. Which is it's a very it's an important message for me, and uh, we were discussing with El Sirion, uh, the guy from Blockstream, that it's tragic that in the forum of the dark markets all the privacy innovation discussion is about Monero adoption and it's not about Bitcoin. We want to see Lightning used privately in in uh, in uh, dark net markets because when fees will be high again, you will not be able to just use on chain, let alone coin join. So we. So 
innovation for the dark market in Bitcoin space is lacking. That's a bad sign. That's something we have to fight. I agree. But the narrative that the darknet markets is leaving Bitcoin for Monero is just retarded. I, it's just false. I don't know. It's hard. You just kind of like explained how it's the beginning of of it's it's happening. I mean, from what when I when I heard you just you you convinced me that you know Monero is edging into Bitcoin's market share on on the dark markets. Well, but most most of the markets accepting Monero are, are accepting also Bitcoin and other coins. Just that, that's exactly my point. And like the, in the beginning, they were only accepting Bitcoin, but now they're accepting Monero and some of them are moving to Monero only. We're not, we're, I don't think anybody, I don't think anybody's saying Bitcoin is no longer used on the dark. Well, no, no, many, many are literally. Oh, literally. well, That's I've another, never seen anyone say that yeah. on Twitter or anywhere else. You, you have to come to, to my, to my block, to my block list on oh, Twitter. I think the trend, <laughs> trend is towards more people adopting Monero for the dark markets and, and more so the, the vendors that are requesting that people pay in Monero. That's that's the you know the meme that I'm I'm seeing and that I I agree with based on what I've seen. I don't I don't you know do my own research on it, but I've sp I've spoken to people on this show that you know spend their time researching this, and that's what they're indicating. My research is indicating a surge in money adoption, which is reasonable, and uh, and 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 basically the great outlier here is Alpha uh, Alpha Bay too. But for the rest, most so most markets are Bitcoin only, and the minority of markets, a, a relative majority of markets, are multi-coin, including Monero, but not only. A, a, a good minority is both, and one market that I know of. I mean, there is nemesis like, but but it's one relevant market is Monero only. So I I agree that there is a growth. It's it's well deserved because it's also a good message for Bitcoin uh, that that use case is important and Bitcoin is the, the people are, are merchants are requesting Monero because users of Bitcoin are fucking are fucking our privacy in a terrible way. And so there is a good reason for that, but it's not even close to the narrative Monero is replacing Bitcoin in the dark markets. It's, it's just not true. Even if, if when you have the option because of liquidity, uh, we cannot see the volume, unfortunately. I know the volume of a few of these because I, I requested it uh, for for work and I, I cannot even check it. But I suspect, I strongly suspect that if we check the volume, all these markets, except for the for, for Alpha Bay, which is is the is Monero only, will have a strong uh, prevalence of Bitcoin volume. Because of obvious reason of liquidity, there are merchants are merchants care for privacy. But they mostly care for heavy customers that can pay, and there is a trade-off between that. And if they can just say to the customer, "Don't be stupid and don't pay me directly from Coinbase uh, withdrawal," uh, then they will do that instead of teaching Monero to to people. So I I I think it's concerning that uh, Bitcoin seems uh, is perceived as in a, inadequate in those in that use case, which is the most important of all. But I don't think that the meme that Monero is already taking over, it, it, it feels like me like the, 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 the Ethereum flipping. It's something that, sure, you can, you have the metric of fees, which is taking, but, but, but the flipping memes is just, it, it's just marketing. It's, uh, it's, it's not even close yet, I think. Seth? Yeah, I mean, main comments for me, I, I think, prefaced with this is one of the things that I've been wanting to spend a lot of time doing my own research on and I haven't gotten to have that time yet so most of my info is coming from other people's reports on darknet activity contacts that I have that do research in darknet markets that kind of thing um, and uh, I think the honest meme here would be that Monero is trending towards becoming a key thing in darknet markets. It's trending towards replacing Bitcoin in many areas. The fact that you're having Monero only marketplaces that are in top three, top five darknet markets, I think is a very telling sign that there's a transition there. And I think another very key one and one that you touched on briefly is that basically all of the discussion on making payments within darknet markets is Monero. Like almost no one talks about Bitcoin or Bitcoin privacy on Dread and on other darknet forums. It's basically only Monero that's talked about. 
Um, and I think that's a very good indicator of both the current scenario, which is where many people are using Monero and many people who would use Bitcoin are being pushed by others who want them to maintain their privacy to use Monero. So that is a, that's a snowball effect that we're seeing happen within darknet markets. Yes, obviously it's, it's disingenuous to say that Monero has replaced Bitcoin in darknet markets. It has not wholly. Um, obviously there are still many markets that are at least accepting Bitcoin. There are still some that are Bitcoin only, even though the ones that are Bitcoin only are generally not top in volume, especially with Hydra dying out with taking with it like 70% of the DNM market share. And they were a Bitcoin only uh, darknet market, which was crazy. And I think that only worked because they operated within Russia and they were given a lot of a lot of leeway because it fit into things that, that Russia needed out of it. But um, I think we are seeing a trend. And I think, like you said, that is, is definitely a trend that is, is visible, that is happening. Um, and that should be concerning to Bitcoiners, because if you cannot use the money in ways the state doesn't, that the state doesn't want you to use it, that money that you're saving is probably pointless because either you won't be allowed to save it, like you said, or you'll be allowed to save it. And then you'll be able to spend it at government approved merchants, government approved institutions, et cetera. And it won't actually have the the freedom value that you think it will have. Um, Absolutely. So the, the real key reason why I harp on darknet market adoption and like to talk about that is because it's something that is really a canary in the coal mine for how useful is this tool when it comes to facing nation states, when it comes to an adversarial environment. And if darknet markets are transitioning from Bitcoin only to at the very least Bitcoin and Monero, basically all of the top darknet markets are at least Bitcoin and Monero. And then often many of the big ones, like you mentioned, White House market was a huge one, a uh, top three in, in volume generally, um, are transitioning to Monero only. That's a, a very clear trend combined, especially with forum discussions and the amount of Monero focused conversation in the the darknet marketplace space um but yes it's disingenuous to say that monero has replaced bitcoin but it, it is trending that way and bitcoiners should be very very wary of that and and understand that that's not something you just dismiss blindly if bitcoin can't be used in that adversarial environment it's a very worrying thing and something that should should be cause for a lot of hard conversations and a lot of potential changes within Bitcoin, within approaches and to upper layers like Lightning Network. Because I mean, like another one there, I, I've heard people talking about like, why aren't darknet markets just using Lightning Network? Um, that would be an absolute nightmare from a darknet market perspective, from a, a vendor perspective. There are so many problems there, not only from the privacy perspective, which within Lightning, particularly received privacy is awful. So the received privacy aspects would be especially harmful to vendors who are generally the ones who are the most privacy conscious and the most understanding of threat models and the most caring about how they get paid and how their privacy is preserved in those transactions. Um, but obviously also just the overhead of maintaining a lightning node, maintaining liquidity, handling that, making sure that at the same time, they still have to maintain their on-chain privacy. So they have to be very, very careful about how they open channels, how they close them, if they're announced, unannounced. There's a lot of stuff that goes in there. So I am I am definitely not surprised that darknet markets have not adopted Lightning because they go for easy and works well in adversarial environments. And Lightning is not easy and it hasn't had to face an adversarial environment yet. Um, so I definitely, I don't see that as a trend that is, is even remotely close. But again, I hope that the topic of darknet markets will be a push for Lightning developers and people focused on Lightning to look at how can this thing fit this adversarial environment, which darknet markets are really our best look at what a, a, a dark market, a parallel economy actually looks like in reality. And if Lightning Network isn't succeeding there, we should be concerned with that. If Bitcoin's not succeeding there, we should be concerned with that because those are big tells that, that maybe there are some deep fundamental flaws that are problematic when you're facing a clearly adversarial environment. I mostly agree. I'm personally more worried by dry discussions that, uh, than um, market share is still uh, is disingenuous to see it has replaced it. I also think it's very premature to say that it's going to replace it because I have seen many other, I, I've seen something similar with Dash uh, four years ago, not not this magnitude, but but similar in in, in memes. And, and it's, it's, liquidity is very sticky. While the problem is innovation, like uh, Bitcoin on chain is probably not going to shrink very much because people found the, the, the comfortable, safe enough zones to use it. So it's probably remaining for very sticky. It's not disappearing overnight because of privacy concerns. While 
there's no innovation. Like they're not, they're, as you said, nobody cares for lightning on dark markets, which is very, very bad. And I, I don't think that it's, it, I agree with you, it's a nightmare. I don't agree it has to, even before huge changes. Of course, when we would go to point, uh, point time lock uh, stuff and, 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 and uh, bind, bind, um, and blinded uh, routes and stuff like that, sure. But even before, right now, I, I, do, I do have a clear net node and I do have a, a, a private routing node. And I don't see many obvious uh, privacy attack surfaces on my private node. Uh, of course, I will not use it if I was uh, if I was Noden, but as a, if I had to sell uh, stuff uh, at least for um, maybe like not super uh, centralized big uh, uh, FBI takedown kind of market, but pr like private vendors with uh, a very private version of a BTCP server, something one click, which is easy to install. I think it's something that we could and should see very soon. My idea was to try to uh, to cooperate with other guys to open a bounty for that, to, to create an open source version, maybe based on NixOS of something similar to BTCP server, but which is not safe for being Alpha Bay, but safe enough to be a small vendor of what the fuck you want. And um, well, I, I agree that it's, it's concerning that it's not happening yet. Yeah, I, I think you circle back to a lot of what you were, a lot of the points that you were making for Bitcoin and, and the shelling point around Bitcoin as a currency. When you when it comes to darknet markets, they don't really care about hard money. They care about dark money, which I think is the, the term that you use. Um, and they care about things that are easy to use. These are not people who are going to jump through 18 hoops to use something privately. So I, I think you will have the same situation there where as Monero gains dominance in darknet markets, it's going to be very hard to sell them on replacing it with something else. The reason Monero is taking over there much more rapidly than in other areas is because they see the clear need for all the things that Monero provides, specifically on-chain privacy and fungibility. Um, and they see that as clearly more than 10x superior to Bitcoin and worth it to build out entire darknet markets that are Monero only or accepting Monero. Um, and I, I think it will be very hard to displace that with Lightning just because of the many issues there, not to mention, like I mentioned, the received privacy. There are lots of proposed fixes for a lot of the current problems with Lightning privacy, but those are not here yet. Um, yeah. But it will be interesting to see. And, and I hope that Lightning developers and researchers and people thinking deeply about Lightning as a potential tool for privacy um, will consider this use case and, and try to figure out, uh, again, I'm not getting into the legality of whether or not you should use the darknet market or spend, but just look at if this thing can or cannot be used in an adversarial environment is a, a key, key bellwether Indicator. for how useful it is. Um, and it's hard to displace a useful tool in those environments. And I think we've even seen that with Bitcoin continuing to be used in darknet markets. I think anyone who's sane and using a, a darknet market would just use Monero if it's accepted. But liquidity is sticky. Getting people to transition is sticky. It, most people are very simple. They already have a Coinbase account. There's no Monero there, so they just keep using Bitcoin. And if they go to jail for that, that is what has happened to many people. But um, it's definitely something where it's hard to replace things. But I think in that sense, in darknet markets, it'll, it'll be interesting to see if either Bitcoin can win back some of that market share or stop the the growth of Monero there, or I, I think more likely Monero will continue to to grow and eventually become dominant in darknet markets. But I hope that that will at least be a push for Bitcoiners to focus more on privacy and fungibility and the ways that we can improve Bitcoin as a tool in adversarial environments and for making those transactions that they don't want us to make. I'm sure it, it will be. Um, I mean, I, I think I'm not concerned about Monero dominance there because I think it will stop before uh, becoming majority because of price dynamics or or, or 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 of scalability dynamics. But I'm really concerned about uh, uh, Lightning not being ready when the next uh, very high fee scenario Bitcoin will hit, and then uh, and that will be bad. So yeah. Anyway, I think that uh, even in the disagreement about the general framework, the the priority is uh, is awkwardly the same. <laughs> Well, one last point I'd bring up on this topic is, you know, ransomware. You know, I, I don't, I don't think, 
ransomware hackers have offered a discount if people pay with the Lightning Network. Uh, but you know, we're seeing a 25% discount being offered for Monero payments, and it's just another example of the market speaking. Yeah. So in general, uh, I think that uh, the amounts involved in um, in ransomware as are such that uh, lighting adoption will still be a little bit far away because it's so easy on chain for that kind of amount. You really go be below maybe two hundred dollars or something like that. So it's uh, it's in in darknet markets you do have small purchases. It it makes sense. So there, it's important, I think, to to start to uh, to 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 work outside of the on-chain paradigm. Well, ransomware probably they will come later. Uh, I even there, twenty-five uh, percent if you pay in Monero. I think that they will may as well do twenty-five percent if if you pay if not from a Coinbase. I mean, the main problem is if in that case the the, the blackmailer is the merchant. And it's the same problem. You don't want the guy that paid you to just pay from a KYC account because if, if it does, you uh, will have a direct problem of of uh, uh, of basically him being interrogated and then basically uh, the exposing uh, or um, uh, reporting you immediately and stuff like that. I think that this problem will self solve uh, thanks to the greatest Bitcoin ally, which is the nation state. They will just prevent people from using Bitcoin KYC for uh, for ransomware. So and so uh, not, right now in Europe, there is a new middle law. Basically, you will not be able to send Bitcoin from a KYC market to any kind of address, let alone ransomware. So mm, the, the main concern that now they have, which is the same concern of the Darknet web, uh, Darknet uh, markets, which is you uh, uh, buyers being very stupid with, with, with their privacy is something which is going to be, if not solved, mitigated by the fact that Bitcoin will be completely kicked out of uh, of any freedom or any spending ability inside KYC traps. So there will be the Bitcoin, which is outside the KYC trap, which is inferior to Monero about privacy, but it's basically the same about fungibility in that case, um, will we'll, we'll keep striving and, and innovating, I hope. While the Bitcoin, which is inside KYC traps, it's it's fact anyway. I, I don't think there is there is a there is a world in which that remains relevant because it's in it's, it's useless. It's literally useless. You can use PayPal for that. A couple of brief interesting things on ransomware. Um, one, I I think that the the actual model of ransomware versus darknet markets are quite different because in ransomware the key risk for the the ransomware attacker is the funds being traced after they receive them it's not what the person sending them does because the person sending them is always a regulated entity one that will be declaring the transaction one that will be working with law enforcement at the time that they make the transaction um, so they know that the funds are going to be known from the point of origination like they know that the fbi or someone is going to be tracing that bitcoin to them so the main reason for the discount and the main reason we've seen in Panero's theoretical growth there and i'll get to that is that the ransomware attacker then has to deal with the tainted funds and properly use privacy tools and be able to to hide them in a way that allows them to actually cash out and actually get to fiat because ultimately they don't want bitcoin they want fiat um but the so the reason for that discount in monero is that they don't have to do those extra steps afterwards they will still have a very targeted threat model so there are probably still some things that they would want to do and over what normal users of Monero would need, but that's a whole other topic, and I'm certainly not giving tips to ransomware attackers here. <laughs> um, but the I think the other interesting thing is we already see some of the uh, nation state enforcing things that make it so that you can't use Monero. In many of these cases, even though most large ransomware attackers request Monero and they request it with a discount if you pay in Monero, almost all ransomware payments still happen within Bitcoin because insurance companies, cybersecurity insurance companies, um, banks and uh, law enforcement basically say, you are going to pay this in Bitcoin so that we can trace it. Um, and that is a, a very common thing within the ransomware world. And it is very rare that a company is allowed to make a payment in Monero 
because they want to be able to trace it and ultimately try to get the funds back. Um, so that's kind of the current landscape now. Some payments do still happen in Monero. Uh, it's certainly not, it's not rare, I guess, but it is still much less frequent than Bitcoin, even though Monero is usually an option and is given at a discount um, because ultimately the person who's having to pay the ransomware attacker doesn't have free will on what asset they choose. They don't have free will on, on the thing that they do. They're, they're pressured by insurance company, bank, law enforcement to use the thing that that they deem traceable and they deem having a higher chance of getting their money back. That's very interesting. I think it may be very jurisdiction, jurisdiction dependent. Like my experience in Italy is strange because in Italy, basically it's uh, the, the law enforcement, which, which just tell you that it's illegal to pay. And so sometimes you will have to, not me, of course, but my cousin will have to help the clients to pay in a secret way because they are explicitly forbidden to pay. And it will be a felony to help them pay even if they have catastrophic loss. In Switzerland, it's not a felony to pay, but uh, I've personally never seen uh, any, tr probably the law enforcement is not into generalized stuff yet that much here. So probably that's 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 what. In Switzerland, the, the, the payment is usually in Bitcoin because the client is just, uh, it, it, it's, it's easier for the client, even when yeah. they have the modern option to just get their hands on Bitcoin. And in Italy, uh, the, the payment is in Bitcoin for the same reason, but uh, the, the, also the client has to be hidden because of, uh, for, uh, because of ban on ransomware paying. Yeah, I mean, with with that ban, you might start to see people trending more towards Monero because they just want to, you know, pay off. It levels the field. It levels the field a bit. Yeah, and there's, there's also, I mean, the, the expert that I had on the show talked about the, the trend towards ransomware payments, uh, the requests getting smaller and the attacks being against smaller targets as opposed to larger targets. Uh, and then that. Then looking forward to see lightning ransomware, it will be epic. <laughs> but I think it will take some time. Have to be some very small ransomware payments to be a, a <laughs> successful path. <laughs> micro ransom. <laughs> All right, guys. I think we we covered everything. Uh, we did. We did. Giacomo, man, greatly appreciate you uh, putting up with us, especially me. Uh, Seth is a very reasonable guy. Not so much myself. Uh, I I greatly appreciate it. Uh, I know it's late for you over there. Yes, yeah, three a.m. is really it's really time to go. But it was it was great. It was very interesting. I, I'm I'm glad to be back discussing with shitcoiners in a way that is satisfying to me. <laughs> way to end on a high note there. <laughs> Maybe we could have you at the next uh, Monero Topia conference or something. Uh, you know, even if you just come in and and and, and school us all and uh, you know teach, teach all the Monero people. We'd, we'd love to have you in, in person. Yeah, also I had to start to uh, very slowly buy my my uh, return card in case really Monero will flip and Bitcoin in the net market and I will be forced to to come with my <laughs> with my low health. So I have to, to, to start building bridges back again. So uh, that's, that's right. <laughs> All right, guys. Thank you, Seth. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. Thank you both for joining. I was glad you're you're willing to do this, Giacomo. I think there's not enough conversations kind of across the aisle uh yeah and twitter, twitter and is not and... yeah twitter is not a good medium for that i agree yeah mm -hmm. for... yes yeah twitter's terrible nuanced conversation and twitter are not a good pair so yeah I i'm glad we we're able to do this i know obviously we have lots of disagreements still but that that's not really the point i think we we're able to get a lot of good opposing viewpoints on key aspects of of both bitcoin and monero the trade-offs they have um and i i think it will be helpful for people to walk through that i think like i I think I frequently say my goal is just that people properly understand the trade-offs of the tools at hand and they get to choose the best tool for them. That's all I really care about. I'm not a, not a Bitcoin maximalist, not a Monero maximalist. I'm, I'm here to make sure that people have access to tools and, and know what is the best fit for them in a given situation. Um, so I'm always glad to be able to, to dive through these topics and get through some nuance and, and, and talk through it because I think it's, it's helpful for everyone. Awesome. Giacomo, any fi final comments? So I was too much open-minded and I would have to compensate uh, as a mean maximalist. Now I, I log on to, to Twitter to, to harass people for a, for a while and then I go to sleep. <laughs> <laughs> a good 3 a.m. activity. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. Greatly appreciate your time uh, and enjoy the rest of your evenings. Cheers. Have Bye. Thank you for joining us on this week's episode. We release new episodes every week. You can find and subscribe to our show on YouTube, Odyssey, iTunes, Spotify, Stitcher, or wherever you listen to podcasts. 
Go to MoneroTalk.live to subscribe for a full list of places where you can watch and listen. If you want to interact with us, guests, or other podcast listeners, you can follow us on Twitter. And please leave us a review on iTunes. It helps people find the show, and we are always happy to read them. So thanks so much, and we look forward to being back next week.